Hi, everyone. Um, I'm going to talk about um, value propositions, which is something that I am completely obsessed with, which means I need to get a life. I get that. But this is something I've spent a lot, a lot of time working on, and it's the hardest thing to do well about your own product or your service, or if you're trying to pitch something to a specific company or an individual. Um, really what I'm going to talk about is how, how do you put the buyer in your value prop? Because most of them are about the products and services. And quite frankly, you might have the best product or service in the world, but I am way more interested in me than I'm interested in your stuff. So how do you get me in? Because here's the thing. Most value props are pretty generic. And the problem with it is that a generic value prop is kind of like all those clothes in your closet that are supposed to fit you and everybody else except it never fits, right? One size fits all, fits no one. So that's kind of my mantra of, about the whole thing. So one of the things to keep in mind is when you've got a value proposition that's completely focused on a product or a service, by default, it's one size fits all. We tend to try to aim it at every single title at the same time because we don't want to skip anything. So it ends up being really bloated, really generic, really one size fits all, and therefore it doesn't really draw buyers the way you, you want it to. So the key is how do I personalize it for my buyers? And I'm going to have more than one. It's rare when you have just one buyer. right? You may have five or six or ten people on a buying team if you're aiming at a larger company. So how do you do that consistently? Because the biggest problem is, if you have salespeople, they're out saying whatever they have to say to anyone they can say it to, and your message is all over the map. Because they're just looking to throw something against the wall and have it stick. So how do we get a personalized message for your buyers that's consistent? So for me, out of our six keys, I'm going to give you the first two. Um, the first one is don't think about a value proposition as one statement. People think that it's like, an elevator pitch. Eh, it's not. It's not a tagline. Those are things you pull out of a good value prop. So I want you to think of a value proposition as a platform. And it's going to have a host of things that are modular in nature that you can pull from to create all kinds of different marketing and sales conversations, websites, emails, discovery questions. So think about it as a platform. So I want you to rethink how we think about it. Because whenever someone comes to me to help them with a value prop, they're looking for the elevator pitch. And I'm like, OK, so you're at stage 15, and we need to start from the beginning. The second key is, how do I personalize? Right? I don't want to you know, have 27 value props. So how do I personalize it and get closer to the targets that matter the most to me? So those are the two keys I'm going to share with you right now. So let's talk about the platform first. This one slide kind of nets out kind of my whole kind of approach towards it. And I'm going to net it out. You want to think about the fact that there's three types of value props. Most people don't know that. There are three types. The first one is the tried and true features and benefits. Um, after 20 odd years in marketing and sales, the confusion between what's a feature and what's a benefit is ridiculous, right? I mean, I could retire if I had a dime for every time I was in that conversation. This is the easiest value prop to do because you don't need to know anything about your customer. You don't need to know anything about your competition. You just gonna need to know a lot about your own stuff. Check. So the majority of them that are out there are this type. Um, the problem <laughs> is we're making assumptions about whether those benefits or those features have any meaning to your potential buyers and how they, they stand up against your competitors, right? The question that it answers, this value prop, is the one we have all heard. Why would I buy your, your products or your services? Which seems like a great question, except it's really kind of simple. And it's not clear enough for the different types of buyers that you have. The second type of value prop is called the alternatives. It's the us versus them. So you're taking your offering and you're pitching it against another competitor. It's kind of like, you know, we're Avis, we're number two, or whether, which, I forget which one, budget, we're number two, right? Where they were literally pitching their value pop directly at another competitor. So it's, it's literally going us and them. We're talking about our, each other's product and services. We're still not talking about the buyer. So that's a, that's a challenge. And then the third type which I have to say is the one that, that is the most effective, 
is the buyer focused one, the all about you value prop. And so when you look at these questions, you start with a simple one, why should I buy your product and service? You move to why should I buy your product and service instead of your competitors? Or you can ask a really smart question that's harder to answer off the top of your head, which is what is most important for me, your buyer, to consider when I'm making a decision? Nothing about features there. It's what's, what do you want me to absolutely know as I'm starting to figure out how I'm going to make that decision and how I start to sort out all the offers that are out there. That's a higher order question and it takes more effort to get there because you need three things. You need the product information. You need to know about your own product, check. You need to know a lot about the competitor, check. And oh, you need to know a lot about your potential customer. What do they want? What do they care about? What problems do they have? How do they feel? What language do they use? So the third type takes the most work, but in the market today, where most of our buyers are out making their decisions without even talking to you, that's the one that has the most impact. Because what you're trying to do is set yourself aside from the 80% of organizations that use this type and are only talking about themselves and the few that are doing this. So that in a nutshell is like a 10 day course right there, okay? So what I wanna make sure is that you really think, you, you start here, right? So here's your blank canvas for de developing a good value prop. Everybody has some form of an offer statement right now. Guaranteed, it's, it's all about your product, it's from your point of view, and maybe it has one or two key features, and you're trying to like, make them sound like a benefit. Okay? So that's where people start. What I suggest is hold that thought and step back a little minute and put your, head, your buyer hat on. There should be, in front of that standard offer statement that you already have some form of today, there should be a buyer objective statement. And that needs to be based on really understanding what they care about, and then you're going to put it in their language. So it's about their need or their challenge or their goal, and you're going to put that in front of your offer statement because that's going to attract them, right? I could invite him out to lunch. Okay, let's just say I do. And I could ask him, just be honest and don't be polite. We sit at lunch, what would you rather talk about? Me, or would you rather talk about yourself? And I know him, he'd rather talk about himself. Right? <laughs> and every buyer that you encounter only wants to talk about themselves. They don't want to talk about your product or service. They want to talk about themselves. So that buyer objective statement, their point of view, their language, you put that on the front end of a value prop, suddenly it's like, oh, wait a minute, he's talking something that I actually am interested in hearing. So that's a good start. Now, you go back to your offer statement and you say, hey, you know what, now I gotta change the language. I gotta make sure that this plugs into that, which means that I shouldn't have to talk about every single thing I want people to know about my, my product or my service, because frankly, it's the beginning of the conversation. That's what a value prop is. It's not the whole thing. So you don't want to stuff everything in there, which is what happens. So less is more. Just what specifically you discovered and you're stating in your buyer objective statement, and then you get to the differentiator. And now it's like, what's different about th how this addresses your problem? That's the key. That's not easy to do. It seems perfectly logical, and if it was, I wouldn't be here talking about it because it's actually quite hard. And this you have to be able to demonstrate and have proof that it's a real differentiator. I cannot tell you how many differentiators that I've seen that like 10 competitors in the market all claim, liar, liar, pants on fire, and there's no proof most of the time. So it's not really all that great. And then I really want to back it up. A really good value proposition platform has automatic backup. So I'll pull out of all of this, the top three to five values that a buyer has in their head as they're about to make a decision. And then I show how we quantify that that value is important, and then I show third-party proof of someone credible, other than me, saying that it's real and it's important. Now I have something that's a little bit more bulletproof. So that's where you want to go. This is, a, this is a template for the platform. So really, I got to really nail down, who am I aiming at? Because it's not everybody. 
right? It shouldn't be everybody. I might have three or four versions of this. I might have a financial services version. I might have one that's aimed just at the CEO and CMO and CFO, the C-suite. I might have one that's aimed at an end user who's really more interested in the down and lower, right? I have all of my buyer issues and I turn it into those three sections that I just talked about. Buyer objective, company offer, differentiator, drivers and proof. So this is a roadmap to a value prop that shows up with a buyer. And those are the three pieces that are buyer focused. So if we go back to key one, that's really where you're going, so it looks like this. And what's nice about this is now, this is more than just an elevator pitch, now I can pick and choose. I could write blog posts or white papers or I could do webinars or I could take these topics and spin them out into other content. I can really focus on those business issues and talk about them. I suddenly have this platform for putting out content a lot of different ways. I could create discovery questions for salespeople around these things and I'm already armed them with the data and the proof to have that conversation. So now I have a lot more to work with which I think is important. Now how do I personalize it? That's the key thing. Well, lots of buyers out there, don't want to miss any. I, I really think focusing on the two or three that actually make a difference is important. Who's going to actually use it, which is where we start, and that's usually who we know. Who's actually going to approve it, and who's going to sign the check? Those are the people I care about, right? And so I want to know the key decision makers, right? I want to understand where they're coming from, and I want to look at the influencers, and I want to know where they're coming from as well. Because sometimes an influencer can kill something that somebody over here was about to do, right? So they're very powerful. So I want to figure out who those people are. So who drives the decision? It really depends, right? It's not always the CEO or the business owner, right? It could be other people. Maybe it's the vice president. Maybe he's got the approval. That person cares or the director cares about the operational part. How am I going to actually implement this thing? And oh, by the way, do we have the budget and I get to sign off? So now I'm aiming at who are the people that really matter when it comes to me? And so there's a couple of different ways I can learn about them. I can either create what's called a persona about that type of individual, right? So I could have three or four personas that I could do a value proposition platform and then I could just position it a little bit different for each one of them so I don't have to start with a blank sheet of paper because I hate that. Or I could just pull some titles and really focus on targeting some very key titles, right? And, and kind of figure out this kind of target information because you need to figure this out before you start writing. And most people just want to go straight to the elevator pitch so the salesperson can do it. So that's key. Or I could do some market research. If I was really smart, I'd start there. That's where you're going to find everything out about your buyer. And, and, and you might find out the one you think is your buyer really isn't. So that's important. So now, let's think about this. I've got my product and service or solution. I've got this sort of value prop, the core one that I've developed, and now I'm going to do three versions. I'm going to do a strategic version for the VP. I'm going to do a financial version for the CFO, and I might do an operational version for the other. So here's the big value prop, and now I'm going to go a little to the right for this guy. I'm going to go a little to the left for that guy so that I have versions that could actually pivot depending on who I'm talking to. Makes it so much easier. So now I've got every piece of this I can use in a variety of ways. So it takes a, a bit more work on the front end, but God, it makes everything else really much easier because the standard old value prop, you're starting with a blank sheet of paper every time you want to create something, every time there's a sales meeting, every time there's a, a presentation you have to build. It's a pain in the butt. But now I have everything and now I can go, oh, okay, I'm going to use this piece, this piece, this piece. I'm going to add in some product service, like done, and it's actually very targeted. And I think that's really key. So I'm going to sum up. Figure out how you're going to approach it first. Your targets. Am I going to come up with some personas? There's lots of a really good, um, there's lots of some really good templates out there. Go to the Buyer Persona Institute. They have free downloadable templates that are awesome for putting this together. Who's on my decision side? Is there, is there different levels, right? And which ones am I going to pick? Start out with no more than three. That's really important. Come up with the base one. Who's the most important person? Or is there a particular buyer issue? And build one for that. And then you can version and make sure that you cover the bases. Operations, finance, and strategy. And you've really covered it. 
you've really covered it. So that, in a nutshell, is kind of the two keys that I would do. I also have some resources. I have an online co course, 10 modules that walks you through with the templates, with coaching online, to help you build one of these. Um, you also have an option of having a live coach. And I have a new book coming out, hopefully, at the end of February, if I'm done. And that's my two keys. Thank you very much.